Spring Integration Filters. Thanks for joining me again, everybody. This is Jim White with Intertech for part three of our eight part series on spring integration. Today's topic, filters. In review, in the last tutorial, we looked at adapters. We learned that adapters are the bridging mechanism between our external systems and our integration framework. In particular, they help to separate the concerns. In other words, allowing our external systems not to know anything about the integration framework and vice versa, allowing the integration framework and the other components of our integration framework not to be concerned about those external systems. Things like transports and protocols used. We learned that there are different types of adapters, inbound and outbound adapters. Inbound adapters, bringing messages into our message channel from those external systems, and outbound adapters, those that get messages from our messaging channels to those external systems, applications, databases, etc. And in particular, you looked at, as part of your tutorial exercise, file adapters. But there are a lot of diff other adapters provided out of the box by Spring Integration, including things like JMS, Stream, Mail, and FTP adapters. In today's tutorial, we're going to look at filters. Filters are again endpoints in Spring Integration, endpoints that sit between two channels. And just like you'd find a filter or a sieve working in your kitchen, a filter accepts some and rejects others. Filters in Spring Integration work to accept some messages from one channel, allowing them to pass to another channel, while rejecting other messages. We say we discard those particular messages. And the selection of messages that are accepted versus those that are rejected are on the basis of what's in the messages payload, or also what may be in the messages metadata, metadata being the header information of a message. So the logic of a filter is pretty simple. It either accepts or rejects based on what it sees in the message, accepting it, allowing it to go on to the next channel, or rejecting it and discarding it from the message system. Just as with adapters, Spring Integration provides many filters out of the box. And in fact, we'll take a look at a few of those. However, you can create your own custom filter using something called a message selector. Filters are represented in EIP diagrams with the icon you see at the bottom of this slide. As I mentioned, we find that Spring Integration provides many built-in components for each of the different endpoints we'll look at. And in particular, again, Spring Integration provides built-in filters. Filters are ready to use out of the framework immediately. The only thing you have to do is configure them. In particular, we find that Spring Integration provides expression filters. These are filters that work on the basis of Spring Expression Language against a message to select certain messages and reject others. We also have XPath filters using an XPath expression to take a look at the XML payload to take a look at whether or not the XML provided in a message is either going to be accepted or rejected. And then an XML validating filter. Those that select and reject messages based on whether or not the XML payload associated to a message is valid against a given schema. Here we see a simple filter. One that is going to be looking at the messages, expecting those messages to contain a spring payload, and using an expression associated with the filter to determine which messages are accepted and those that are rejected. In this case, looking at the payload of a message and checking to see if the string in the payload starts with the word hello. So again, a filter sits between two channels as represented by this example. In this case, the input channel being the inbound channel and the output channel being the outbound channel. Messages that are rejected are simply removed from the Spring Integration system, removed from the Spring Integration message channel and other components. However, optionally, as we see at the example at the bottom of the slide, you can also provide a discard channel with your filter and thereby specify a channel to send those messages which have been rejected by the filter. In this case, send them off to the relook channel. There are going to be times when the filters provided out of the box by Spring Integration are not going to meet your needs. It's at that time that you're going to want to implement your own custom filter. In order to implement a custom filter, you'll need to implement the Spring Integration Message Selector interface. 
And that interface is actually quite simple. All it needs is a method that is passed a message as a parameter. And that message could contain any type of payload. And then it either accepts or rejects the message via its return Boolean value, true or false. True accepting, false rejecting the message. In the example at the bottom of the slide, you see a simple message selector that actually does the same work that we saw in the previous example. So it's a little bit nonsensical in that you wouldn't need to create a message selector that is already accomplished by a spring integration built-in filter. But hopefully you get the idea. Create a message selector providing a method that accepts or rejects inbound messages. Once you've implemented the message selector interface, you then have to configure the filter. In this case, we're again creating the filter with inbound and outbound channels, as we saw in the previous example. But notice this time, the expression is replaced by a reference to the my selector bean. The my selector being an implementation again of our message selector. So in this tutorial, you've taken a look at spring integration filters. You've looked at built-in spring integration filters, as well as how to build your own custom filter using the message selector interface. With that, I think you're ready to tackle lab number three. And in lab number three, you're going to get a chance to look at three different types of spring integration filters. And as you might imagine, you'll also take a look at how to use the message selector interface to create your own custom filter. And by the way, in this lab, you're also going to get a chance to see a message transformer something that you'll learn a lot more about in our next tutorial. And with that, I wish you the success with lab number three and hope you'll come back to join us again for tutorial number four, where we'll tackle more information about those transformers in spring integration.